Welcome to the Essentially Translatable Podcast brought to you by Lutheran Bible Translators. My name is Richard Oski. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at LBT. In today's episode, I had the opportunity to speak to my colleague Emily Wilson, who serves as our Mission Mobilization Coordinator. When the LBT office moved from the Chicago area to Concordia, Missouri nearly five years ago, day one of the new office was Emily and me, our computers, and a card table. So we've been through quite a bit together these last few years. We caught up recently to talk about opportunities for service, theology, and missionary internships with LBT. Enjoy today's episode. Okay, Emily, thanks for being on the podcast today. I'm excited to talk to you about your work as a mission mobilization coordinator and uh, some of the great stuff going on at LBT. First, I'd like the the listeners to just get to know you a little bit better. Tell us uh, how you got started in mission, what you were doing before, and how God led you to serve with us at LBT. It feels like a long journey. So if anyone asked me in high school, the the goal was to become a secondary education history teacher. And that didn't happen. Um, After prayerfully considering in my uh, college days, I felt called to study theology. Mm. And during that time, I was blessed to uh, experience this cross-cultural ministry aspect of what does it mean to engage in God's mission, the importance of worldview. And so uh, I was studying uh, at Trinity Christian College up in Palis Heights, Illinois, and had the opportunity to travel to South Africa, fell in love with that country Mm -hmm. uh, and the people there, and really just experienced the power of God's word among people and fell in love with international travel and international ministry. So when I returned, I just was able to participate in a missions course. And I was first introduced to this idea of Bible translation ministry. During that, I just kind of wrestled with concepts of, well, it's not always an easy translation. For example, what if they don't have sheep in their region? And what does that mean for people as you translate something like, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Mm -hmm. What what does that mean? So introduced to this uh, concept of Bible translation, was intrigued by it, and also required a an internship for graduation. So I was scouting around looking um, for a translation sort of into that theology degree. What does this mean? I'm not looking to serve necessarily in a church mm-hmm. publication. What What's exactly happening? And just stumbled across Lutheran Bible Translators uh, up in Aurora, Illinois. And that internship that was only supposed to last a month uh, turned into a summer job, turned into, can you stay till the end of the year, turned into, can you move to Concordia, Missouri? (laughs) So uh, it's going to be six years in June that I've been with the organization. Yeah, so just taking a step back for a second because I think this is this is interesting. You you started out thinking about being a teacher, and then you switched to theology. So, what were you thinking when you switched to theology in terms of okay, what am I going to do with this, or just kind of following that interest, or how did how did that happen? Yeah, so it was I was studying at a Catholic university uh, for the secondary education history, and um, it was required to take a theology course. And although I enjoyed the course, I knew that I wanted to have uh, more of a reformed focus, that idea of grace, but also uh, a focus on Christian values and doctrine uh, alone. So originally was looking at one of the Concordia schools and wasn't sure was I being called into deaconess um, studies and really didn't feel called to serve within a church. Rather, how could I make my skills and my talents available to larger church body, being able to provide an opportunity maybe to use editorial skills or networking, uh, social organizing skills to be able to 
build up the church. So initially when I was switching to theology with a history and English double minor, it was, well, could I could I see myself in Christian publication? Okay. Um, so Lutheran Bible Translators does publish, but That's not true, quite right? in, the same, not in the same way I was in, as I was anticipating. So yeah. yeah, that's how God works. Oh, I think publication says, okay, yeah, publication, <laughs> right. <laughs> so your title now, after you've actually done a number of things with us, um, we'll talk so, about some of those, but uh, your title now is Mission Mobilization Coordinator. So what does that mean? What do you actually do? I'm sure that you get asked that a lot, especially if you hand that card out. Or... Yeah. So when I'm visiting classrooms and giving a presentation, that's actually the first thing that I say is, like, hello, my name is Emily Wilson, and I'm the Mission Mobilization Coordinator probably asking yourself, what does that mean? It's a good <laughs> Lutheran you, question. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. And because I normally get a couple of blank stares, mm -hmm. um, but we are all called to participate in God's mission. And it's it looks different for each person. And that's what I really share with individuals yeah. because when I stand in front of a classroom, many people likely think, well, I, I'm not feeling called to serve internationally, so therefore this presentation doesn't apply to me. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is it, it absolutely does. God is calling us to participate, whether it's by prayer, um, by advocacy, sharing with other people about the work of Bible translation, the needs that exist. It could be participating in his mission by not only the prayerful support, but also financially giving, you know, mm -hmm. which of course makes um, a college student usually <laughs> turn green. <That's>, yeah. <laughs> but letting them know like, hey, you know, you can be an advocate for your church to financially support. Or there is that going aspect that they might feel uh, a nudge from the Holy Spirit to maybe serve internationally. And we do have uh, a number of different roles. It's not just Bible translation, uh, but also this idea of how people engage with scripture. And that might happen by literacy. You know, it, it might be uh, written language development, so orthography, developing programs for people to learn to read and write in their language, vernacular media, audio, audiovisual, uh, non-print resources to engage with scripture. But also information technology. That's something that not a lot of people think about, but there are a lot of needs in an international ministry context for support. I mean, we're all experiencing that right now. Uh, people uh, being distant from one another and how essential it is to have that kind of tech support. But also uh, we have individuals serving as teachers for our missionary kids. Uh, so when I am out sharing about these, you know, pray, give, go, it, it's a real blessing to to kind of see people's eyes light up of, oh, okay, it's not just a one size fits all, but uh, God calls each one of us with our own gifts. Yeah, I think that's a really important message that especially the the audience that you're usually speaking with needs to hear. I mean, that there's generally in young folks a desire to to make a difference and to do something that's meaningful. And um, it's really important to kind of matrix that idea of God calling and uh, a mission with this idea of what's meaningful and, and finding a place in that. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned scripture engagement and just the, Bi the whole Bible basis of the ministry, I guess assumes the importance of the Bible. For you, you know, to be passionate about the the work that you do and to, to mobilize resources and, and folks to be involved in that ministry, how important is the scripture to you or what's the role of the Bible in your life? Yeah, I was raised in the church. I, I mm -hmm. feel very blessed to, I was, you know, grew up in a congregation. I was third generation, baptized, confirmed, yeah. uh, went all through high school. And seeing the impact, not only what the church taught, but being able to be in the word, watching um, my, my pastors, my mom, my youth uh, leaders engage in scripture really showed me that it wasn't just, you know, what do you find in your catechism? Because guess what? The catechism points back to scripture. Yeah. Uh, it's not 
just the the words of men, but it is God breathed. It's holy and living and active and powerful. And that we experience that transformation from the Holy Spirit working through the, the words that we read. And so it is my daily source of strength mm-hmm. and the fuel that I need that everything that I know about who God is and who God is not, I find in, in scripture. And that gives me such a comfort of, especially reading different verses about um, God's faithfulness and God's love. And being on the road, a lot of times things can be more challenging, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's just transportation or maybe loneliness or just seeking inspiration. Maybe the notes just didn't feel like they were (laughs) quite right um, as I was chatting with someone and just, you know, turning to scripture and saying, God, all these things are in your hands. I am um, here as your follower, as your, you know, as someone who is looking to serve you. And I, I put these things in your hands. And so being able to turn to that truth and just wholeheartedly lean on that, leaning not on my own understanding and be, being able to see that and read that and digest it and that those words of truth, they don't have an expiration date. Yeah. Uh, what was true thousands of years ago is true today and seeing how much that applies to my life. Yeah. And so then just thinking of your own experience and how you're able to engage with the scripture, how does that translate into you know, why you do what you do with LBT? Really, there is such um, an important aspect that I think so many Christians can lose sight of. We have our foundation in scripture. And there's this quote from uh, Reverend Dr. Kwame Bediako arguing that if individuals do not have access to scripture in their heart language, in their mother tongue, how can they build sustainable Christian thought, life, and community? That's church and Bible studies Mm -hmm. and Christian universities and seminaries and so many aspects of what we do on a daily basis and how we think and our our attitudes, our actions are shaped by scripture. But it's because it's in our heart language that we're really able to delve deeper yeah. and to emotionally connect. And when I share with individuals, you know, thousands of languages are without the full Bible, that yes, a lot of the majority languages that, that that's accessible for someone, but it's not the same depth for a lot of individuals to engage. It's the trade language or, you know, it's the, the language of maybe an oppressor. And how can we sit uh, and be at a feast while others are starving? I think that that's a, from a former Wycliffe CEO who said that. And I just, that imagery, you know, Jesus being the bread of life, that really resonates with me of, that's something to share. That's something to strive for, for everyone to be able to have access. And it's something that we can be a part of. And again, that praying, that giving, that advocacy, the going, that's all part of what God is doing through Bible translation ministry. So seeing the impact, how transformative God's word is in my life, that transformation can be for everyone. Yeah, that's so true. Um, and so some of the, I mean, you, you've been the beneficiary then of, of generations of your family and others who had access to God's word and who brought you up in that faith and and then, you know, have access to a community where this theologizing, talking about God, wrestling with what are the problems in life and what has God had to say about it are all things that you've done, especially as a student of theology uh, yourself. And I, you know, it's all bragging. I'm a little bit, she's not just a student of theology. She's like a 4.0 student in theology. So um, which part of theology do you, you know, you most enjoy studying or reflecting, or if somebody sits down with you and says, Hey, let's talk theology, what's your go-to? 
Mm, although I would say most of my courses, schedule-wise, it worked out for it to be more systematic theology. And of course, I loved sharing with my classmates my, mm. my Lutheran background. Yeah. I personally found a lot of joy in studying the, the Pentateuch okay. uh, and in studying the Gospels and Acts being able to see what the authors were a- accomplishing, being able to draw that connection between Genesis and John, mm-hmm. and uh, just this joy of the meta narrative of Scripture that this is God's overarching story of salvation, and He has intricately weaved that together. That there are some. Uh, aspects as you're reading that um, it's well what what is happening here you know well what's the genre like what what are these metaphors and digging down deeper so for example looking at exodus has completely different joy and meaning when you're here reading about maybe the plagues and it seems very dark and ominous and you're wondering, well, why, why frogs? <laughs> uh, why, why is the Nile being turned to blood? And looking at the parallels of Egyptian deities and those beliefs and how it was God showing his almighty sovereignty and his power and that he is the one true God in comparison with these other deities. And it was yeah. basically this spiritual warfare that if you're not familiar with the context, the exegetical analysis, it could be completely missed. So being able to delve down deeper into the exegesis and the hermeneutics was really always just is my jam. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're really drawn to the story parts or narrative parts. And you said the Pentateuch, so that's those first five books in the Old Testament when there's, well, there's quite a bit of narrative there. There's actually quite a bit of other stuff there too. And then the, certainly the Gospels have a lot of stories. So you'd like to really connect with the the story. Yeah, I right. think that makes it more personal and you can see how God's people at different times in different circumstances. And sometimes those circumstances are pretty similar to our circumstances. And how they acted or how they didn't act, you know, real well, and how God's grace is really mm-hmm. the underlying or the uh, overarching theme, I guess, in, in those. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So I wanted to back up and talk a little bit about uh, internships. So you mentioned that you came to us via an internship. Now, you one of your roles, so Emily, is more than just a one-trick uh, pony here, I guess, if you can <laughs> say that. Uh, she has a number of things for us. We'll talk about a couple. So she, in addition to uh, mobilizing folks to serve in mission, she uh, directs our internships. So tell us a little bit about field internships at LBT, the value of an internship experience, what might be involved in that, and why maybe somebody listening would consider an internship um, with LBT or with just an internship in general, rather than launching straight into a career, Mm -hmm. because that's basically what you did. Um, Mm -hmm. I guess, number one, it was required by your school. So, okay, let's set that aside. But (laughs) why would somebody look to do an internship? What's the value? Well, what we really try to offer within Lutheran Bible Translators is an opportunity to experience and explore what I tell people like we're not expecting you to sign up on the dotted line without being able to delve in deeper and to be able to wrestle with those challenging questions of, okay, is is this in fact where God is calling me? Or is this just like, I love international travel and being able to self-assess, do I have an aptitude? Is this draining for me? Or maybe this idea of, you know, being separated from family. And these are all very important questions that should be wrestled with Mm -hmm. before someone makes a commitment. And so an internship offers an opportunity to do that. Now, the internship program is relatively newer uh, in in the way we're approaching things uh, this decade. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So it... Right now, obviously, everything is at a standstill. But if the circumstances are right, 
regarding international travel. The, the hope is to offer individuals three months, six months, a year long international internship opportunity to be able to observe the work mm -hmm. of either Bible translation or scripture engagement and learn some skills along the way. Uh, it's important that an intern is a learner. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that's the primary role. Some people are kind of concerned, you know, am I just going to be a glorified, you know, like gopher, you know, <laughs> like go for the coffee or go, for, you know, go collect the stuff off the printer. We really want individuals to engage as much as possible with the missionaries and the partners and having a mentorship. We use the, the phrase in missions of walking alongside, and that's mm -hmm something we really want to foster within people who are able to, you know, see themselves, you know, and picture themselves in this kind of role and being able to, before making that leap into an international uh, career service, which, you know, is years at a time, being able to experience that shorter term. So within that time, being realistic, Again, it's not like you're able to accomplish a, a full-on project. The, the goal is accomplished if you are able to walk away and say, you know, I, I've experienced cross-cultural living. Mm -hmm. I have <laughs> lived away from, you know, my, my family and my school. Uh, I've, I've learned to um, go grocery shopping <laughs> and cook for myself in another country and context, being able to worship with other people in a not necessarily a context that's familiar with, for you. Maybe you come from a very liturgical background and what you're experiencing internationally is not that. Being able to feel stretched in that way, yeah. even in the office, how to practice dialogue, international, sensitivity, cross-cultural sensitivity in dialogue, and also learning from mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, because all of our missionaries can attest to uh, that something that is very normal within our um, cultural framework and context, it might even be considered polite. And may be something that's very rude <laughs> in another yeah. culture. And so digesting those experiences and being able to come out the other side with a better understanding. So it's really to provide an exploration framework and uh, for self-reflection. But it is not, I, I say all this, but it's not required sure. uh, for an individual to apply for missionary service either. What is required for somebody to be an intern, though, if somebody's thinking, hey, I'd like to work towards that? Sure. So our internship program, uh, we we really do uh, require for individuals to have that emotional maturity. So and looking for um, it to be that they're they're a legal adult <laughs> over yeah. 18 and that we we aren't also just wanting uh, again, someone who's just looking for an international adventure, that there is um, a passion for Bible translation ministry work and uh, a desire to explore the long term. So that is definitely kept in mind uh, in the application process, as well as uh, being able to um, invest in a little bit of pre-field orientation and training. We're not looking for you to do master's level coursework or anything like that, but being able to go through the required readings, meet with missionaries and regional directors. If it if there is a, a lead up time uh, available, maybe a year or two before the internship actually uh, takes place, it's good to take maybe a linguistics course or something along the lines of cross-cultural business or interactions uh, so that you have a little bit more under your belt. Uh, but it's, and theology, of course, can mm -hmm. be helpful if you are at a, a private institution. 
But again, because you're a learner, it's not like we're looking for you to be that expert uh, to be able to contribute. So we're we're wanting to provide more tools for an intern to explore. Yeah. So if somebody doesn't have the the opportunity to um, go on an internship, maybe they don't have the three months or six months. In a normal year, we've kind of alluded that the decade hasn't gotten off on the right foot, right? But uh, in a normal year, what mother, what other opportunity might there be to get some hands-on field experience with sure. LBT? So. Not the field experience part, but definitely hands on in the sense of connecting. We have a mission exploration conference that we do on an annual basis. This year it's going to be online. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're really excited about that because um, there's not a limit. <laughs> we are free to have as many people join us. Okay. As, as they wish, uh, because we're not limited to a physical space being online. The, the more the merrier. And so during that time, we have courses uh, where missionaries are leading and are able to speak into topics like translation and vernacular media and literacy. Uh, and th these are experienced missionaries. They're able to share uh, about what they are doing within these programs. But we are also talking about topics like living overseas and uh, missionaries were uh, looking for them to share. What's it like a day in the life, mm -hmm. if you will? And uh, like, what what does the routine look like? Uh, we also want to talk about vocation and uh, God's mission, looking specifically uh, at our uh, Lutheran missiology in that and uh, talking about spiritual warfare as well as spiritual formation. So really exciting opportunity for online uh, and for the wonderful price of free. Yeah, um, yeah so that's a really exciting opportunity. Uh, but if someone is saying, well, I've never traveled internationally or maybe I've traveled internationally, but it was just a vacation, I want to be able to see a little bit more of the work in progress, uh, be able to, in a safer way, um, stretch the skills of cross-cultural adaptation, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, we have an opportunity called Crossroads. Again, <laughs> as, as it permits, <laughs> we're, we're hoping to host this on an annual basis. This past year, we were in Ethiopia, the year before that we were in Nigeria. And uh, these trips are anywhere from two to three weeks in length and being able to just be an observer. So although an intern is a learner and goes from observing to actual participation, yeah. uh, the, the Crossroads trip has a more limited participation. It's a um, relationship building where that's possible, uh, yeah. but it's a lot of time on the road uh, shifting between uh, language programs and communities. But being able to interact with missionaries, being able to see what their uh, daily living is like and meeting our LBT partners on the field and seeing the work in, in its context and the, the community uh, gathered around it and the impact there. So, for example, in Nigeria and Ethiopia, we were able to see people gathered around to their weekly audio uh, listening of scripture, right? So people were gathered around an audio device and they were able to do Bible study and, and seeing uh, the impact of raising uh, children up in the faith uh, being able to hear scripture and then ask questions to analyze that and, and apply that into their homes. Yeah, sounds great. So lots of opportunities to connect. Of all the stuff you're working on in, in sort of a changed uh, atmosphere right now, what are the what's the thing you're most excited about in your work right now? Uh, yeah, the, the mission exploration online yeah. is probably uh, my, my most exciting venture right now. It's completely new for me to be working um, online rather than I, I'm more of a 
an extrovert or ambivert. And being in person is really where I thrive. And so it was a little bit of a disappointment, the idea of not being able to meet and do our admission exploration in person, because usually there's talking over meals with missionaries or night events. But the fact that we're able to engage with missionaries around the world, that more people can gather together in this space than just 10. Uh, We already have 12 participants signed up, so we're looking forward to many more. And just getting a good conversation going, that's really where I personally witness, you know, just what God is doing within my role of of mobilization, people in conversation with one another. Great. So, uh, Emily, just one more time before we go, how can folks connect with you to explore getting involved in the Bible translation movement? They can contact me at recruiter at lbt.org or visiting lbt.org slash go and uh, filling out uh, that info form or just shooting me an email and ask as many questions as are on your mind because the more questions that you ask, the more it shares with me uh, where your heart is. And so I'd love to connect you further with missionaries and staff to be able to share their stories. So recruiter at lbt.org or lbt.org slash go. All right. Very good. Thanks, Emily, for being with us today. Thank you. Thanks, Emily Wilson, for being our guest on the podcast today. If you are interested in learning more about missionary service or internships with LBT or to register for LBT's free Mission Explorers online event happening in July, check out www.lbt.org slash go or email Emily at recruiter at lbt.org. Sometimes the beginning of a new path in God's mission begins with a single step of reaching out and learning what's possible. Thank you for listening to the Essentially Translatable podcast brought to you by Lutheran Bible Translators. Look for past episodes of the podcast at lbt.org slash podcasts or on Apple, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow Lutheran Bible Translators on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or go to www.lbt.org to find out how you can get involved in the Bible translation movement and put God's Word in their hands. The Essentially Translatable podcast is edited and produced by Andrew Olson. Executive producer is Amy Gertz. Music written and performed by Rob Veit. I'm Rich Radowski. So long for now.